It's Aspect 3. What am I talking about? Find out. We've been working with Dungeon Fog for years for a reason. They are the best battle map maker that you can possibly hope to have and make, and aside from 10,000 community shared maps which you can access instantaneously, they also have an amazing Discord server. There are so many cool things here. There are contests that get announced frequently. There are support channels just for help on how to build a map, on this kind of thing, on that kind of thing, anything you could possibly want. There are also also channels for sharing your maps, showcasing your maps and getting feedback from the community as to where you went wrong, where you went right and what you could do to improve. Really Dungeon Fog is a complete, complete end to end solution for making the best battle maps you could possibly make. Use the code GREATGM for a discount when signing up to Dungeon Fog. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and today we are looking at Aspect 3 of our great journey as a great GM. Remember, Aspect 3 is looking at your game. We've looked at you, yourself, you, yourself, depending, developing yourself, developing your world space to make your world space work for you. And now we're on to Aspect 3, which is into the nitty gritty, the final step, the final step space to make our games work for us rather than us work for our games and whoever we need to point fingers at so be it Ta! fingers shall be pointed all right so what do we need well when we look at our next step we have to figure out how to start it we have to figure out how to get our players involved in all of these things that we've got going on. The NPC plans, the structures, and all that kind of stuff is meaningless if the players themselves do not care, do not want to be involved, do not want to be invested. And in order to do that, we need to trigger something that is out of the ordinary. We need to trigger something that is going to cause the players to go, aha, I smell something, and it smells like an adventure. So I want to go on it, thank you very much. Or that they go, mm, no, 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 that I... Hopefully you know your players, and we'll be talking about players in a few episodes. Uh, well, next week, actually, so watch out for that. But um, we we need to, to decide how we're going to get our players involved. It can be tricky. Now, the biggest thing is when you are launching a thing, when you are launching an event, now, I call these things events, when you trigger an event, a scream in the night from outside of the tavern. A star explodes. Something that is out of the ordinary. The player characters are going to look at that and go, well, that's maybe out of the ordinary, but this could be the first time we're in the playing in this world space. It could be that that just seems like a giant GM setup, and I'm not biting, or it could be a this, or it could be that. We need to then somehow reinforce and re re revitalize their interest. If it starts to flag, if they immediately go, oh my goodness, right, let's go and investigate, let's go and do this, we're okay. But we then, even if they go and investigate, we need to reinforce, re-entrench, and also support the player characters as they now are going on their journey. We need to make sure that our NPCs are reacting appropriately, and that they are reacting consistently, and that they are reacting. There are so many times where the world is ending and the NPCs are still trying to sell their wares in the market or they just their dialogue doesn't seem to make any kind of sense. So how do we make sure that our NPCs react appropriately? Well, we look at their OGAS. What is their OGAS telling us? Oh, well, their goal is to actually get the hell out of Dodge before Dodge burns down so they're not going to keep their blacksmith shop open. I'm sorry, we're leaving. The world is over. Or perhaps it's to protect their home, or protect. perhaps it's to make sure that the adventurers can pre protect their homes. OGAS will tell us what the NPCs should be doing. The NPCs, though, should always be reacting to what the hell is happening. And if there's a strange cry in the middle of the night, why shouldn't the NPCs get up and run out and go and check as well? Why should they all just turn to this bunch of random strangers who've walked into their tavern and gone, well, you look trustworthy, why don't you go to investigate? No, it could be that one of their wives that have been screeched, or one of their husbands, or one of their daughters or sons or whatever it is, well, however the relationship might work. It could be someone important to them. So they should go rushing out, especially if the PCs don't react. Because if they go rushing out and then one of them comes staggering back in covered in blood and the PCs are still like, mm, yeah, ho-hum, make sure that the blood then starts to crawl off of the P NPC and starts to attack the PCs. Do you see what I'm saying? We use these 
events that we we trigger we we have a moment it triggers the event happens the pcs either engage or they don't or we just continue to trigger more and more events until the pcs go well we're now involved and those events are not necessarily linked to the original they are simply repercussions that happen as a result of that uh, launch of the very first event always i i would say always link whatever event it is that you are triggering to the adventure type that you're going to be using. There are four adventure types, four main adventure types, and four sub-adventure types. We've spoken about those on the channel. Go find the, the, the videos if you want to find out more about that. <clears throat> if it's thwarting, make sure that you start off with something that is of a combat-like nature. If it's discovery, make sure you start off with something that's more investigative, more curiosity-based. If it's a collection mission or a delivery mission, make sure that there is something that links to that particular type. Why? Well, because these are subtle triggers and subtle, uh, not triggers, these are subtle clues that we are giving to our players. Oh, this is this kind of adventure. This is this kind of space. You can mix it up and change it around, but I would advise that until you've mastered this technique, simply keep it straightforward. Keep the events happening until the players bite or until you realize they're just not interested. If the players are just not interested, it doesn't matter whether you are trying to align these events to a particular type of adventure or not, they're just not going to go on it. So then you need to listen to them and see what they are talking about and go, ah, they're actually looking for this. Or they think it's actually this that's happening and then the scream was a deception. Go with that. Go with the flow. Use your structure. Use your adventure types. And then launch something that will feed into what the players are talking about. I cannot emphasize, emphasize I cannot emphasize this enough. Our players are going to be giving us clues. Take those clues, throw out events that the players can react to or not, and you will be amazed at how it all comes together. That's all I'm talking about this week. I hope you have a great week. I hope that you trigger something amazing, that your event is super cool, super huge. And uh, until next week, a massive thank you to our patrons and to you for watching all the way until the end. Until next time, happy gaming.